Hey, what's going on everybody? Special right triangles is the topic for this video and well the next two videos and in this one in particular we're, we're going to work with 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. You might remember those from geometry and the goal is that you will use exact values for trig ratios in a 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle. All right. And then in the next video we'll look at 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree triangles and the trig ratios for those. Now, when I say you're going to use exact values for trig ratios in a 45-45-90 triangle, let me explain what that means right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to expect you to know what the sine of 45 degrees is, what the cosine of 45 degrees is, and what the tangent of 45 degrees is. You're going to know the exact values of those two things rather than being required to use your calculator anytime you need to use those measurements. All right, well, let's talk about 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. First of all, you guys know the little, I don't know if you call it a trick, but you know that if you know two angle measures in a triangle, you can find their sum and subtract from 180 to find the third angle. So if this angle is 45, that one's going to have to be 45 in order for these three to add up to 180 degrees, right? So it's a 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle. And another thing you might recall is that any time in a triangle, there are two congruent angles, which these two 45 degree angles would be, then the triangle will also have two congruent sides. The sides across from those angles will be congruent to one another. Okay, so a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle happens to be an isosceles right triangle also. So everything I'm teaching here has to do with isosceles right triangles. Now I'm going to make up some numbers here. Let's just suppose that the two legs of this right triangle are one unit each. All right, so that's one and that's one. And what I want to do is use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the third side. And then I want to look at a 45 degree angle and see what is the ratio between its opposite leg and the hypotenuse, for instance, to find the sine of 45 degrees, and so forth. All right, using Pythagorean theorem. We don't know this third side, so let's just call that side C for the moment we would say that c squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared. All right, now that's going to be 1 plus 1 or 2. c squared is going to equal 2, and so c equals the square root of 2. That's what the third side of the triangle would end up having to be. So I'm going to put a square root of 2 right there. Okay, now you might recall this from geometry. I'm going to approach it a different way in our IB class, but in geometry you learned that the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle is always the square root of 2 times the length of one of the legs of the right triangle. All right, well, so what does that mean for the sine and cosine and tangent of a 45 degree angle? Well, in a right triangle where you've got a 45 degree angle, the ratio between the opposite leg from that angle and the hypotenuse is always 1 over the square root of 2. And then if you simplify that expression. In other words, get rid of the radical in the denominator. That becomes the square root of 2 over 2. You're going to have to have this memorized. The sine of 45 degrees is either 1 over the square root of 2 or the square root of 2 over 2. All right, no way around that. IB is going to expect you to know it. These next two chapters we're dealing with, you're going to have to know these values. Well, what about the cosine of a 45 degree angle? You can see that the length of the adjacent leg so that 45 degree angle is 1, and the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. So the cosine of a 45 degree angle happens to be exactly the same as the sine of that 45 degree angle. 1 over the square root of 2, or the square root of 2 over 2. And then the tangent of a 45 degree angle. Remember the tangent is the ratio between the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. So from this 45 degree angle, the opposite leg is 1, the adjacent leg is 1. And if you make a ratio of 1 over 1, that's just 1. That just basically means that the legs of a, four, of a right triangle with 45 degree angles are going to be equal to one another. All right, you need to know those values. Now let me show you how we're going to use them. We're going to find the exact value for each variable in these next two or three triangles. All right, now I've given you some just normal variables that you're used to seeing x and y for side lengths. I also gave you a Greek letter for the variable form missing angle measure. Now that's not going to be tough. We already know this triangle has a 45 and a 90 degree angle so that means we already know that alpha is going to be 45 degrees. 
All right. Well, how are we going to go about finding the value of x? Well, we know that this side over here is 14. Now, we know this is an isosceles right triangle, but I need to show you how to use trig ratios in order to find this value. So even though you already know the answer, watch how this is going to work. From this 45 degree angle, 14 is the opposite leg, x is the adjacent leg. So if I was going to make a trig equation that related them, I would be using a tangent, and I would say that the tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 14 over x. Now, since the direction said use the exact value, you're not going to be able to type in the tangent of 45 degrees on your calculator. This would be if this was a non-calculator question. So we're going to have to use the value that I just showed you that you're going to memorize. And we just said that the tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 1. So we'll substitute that in. 1 equals 14 over x. So then x is equal to 14. All right, that was super easy because the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. But hopefully you see the way I used the trig equation in order to find that solution. Then when we're trying to find the value of y, that's the length of the hypotenuse, we knew the opposite leg. So let's use a sine ratio to relate those two things. The sine of 45 degrees is equal to 14 over y. And the sine of 45 degrees, we said, is the square root of 2 over 2. So that's equal to 14 over y. Now we got two equal ratios here. Let's do a little cross multiplication. You get the square root of 2 times y is equal to 28. Bring the rest of the work over here. Then you need to divide both sides by the square root of 2. So you get y equals 28 divided by the square root of 2. And then if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom both by the square root of 2, you get 28 square root of 2 over 2, which is just 14 square root of 2. All right, great. Hopefully this is making sense to you. Let's do the next. All right, this time I didn't tell you either of the acute angle measures of this triangle. And I gave you the length of the two legs. We're trying to find the length of the hypotenuse. Now, you can use Pythagorean theorem to do that. That's not a problem at all. But I do want you to see the relationship between the two side lengths that I gave you. I just told you that those two lengths are equal to one another, right? The legs are equal to one another. And that only happens in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we can tell just from the equal side lengths that alpha and beta are both 45 degrees. And then to find the value of x. Well, so let's put a 45 degree angle in here somewhere. I'll label this one as 45 degrees. And let's say I want to use this, the bottom side of the triangle, in order to find the hypotenuse. So I would be comparing the adjacent leg with the hypotenuse, and so I'd be using the cosine of 45 degrees. And that would be equal to 32 over x. Now see if you can solve this one the same way that we solved for y in the previous problem. I'll let you pause the video and take care of that. You can see where I substituted the square root of 2 over 2 in place of the cosine of 45 degrees. Now I'm going to cross multiply. Then divide both sides by the square root of 2. And if you rationalize the denominator the way that we did, you're going to end up with 32 square root of 2 as a result. All right, one more example in this video. I'm telling you in this picture that ABCD is a square. And you see three distances that I need you to find given the length of the diagonal of that square. All right, well, first of all, one of the reasons, or what I credit the reason as being, as to why we call a 45-45-90 triangle a special right triangle is that it's half of a square. And there's lots of problems that involve finding measurements in squares, and so, well, it's useful to use a 45-45-90 degree triangle quite often. Knowing that it is a square, whenever you draw the diagonal of a square, it's going to create an isosceles right triangle because all the sides of the square were equal, and so it's going to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we know theta is 45 degrees. Okay? Then x and y are both going to be equal to the same thing. Let me label this 45 degree angle here. 
let's say we find x, we would be using a cosine ratio to do that because we know the adjacent leg to the 45 degree angle and we're looking for the hypotenuse. So we can say x, whoops, the cosine of 45 degrees is what I meant to write, equals x over 25. All right, go ahead and do the algebra, see what you get. The only difference in the algebra here is that I'm not going to bother cross-multiplying because, well, x is in the numerator this time. It's less helpful to cross-multiply. Let's just go ahead and multiply both sides by 25. And when you do that, then you're going to have 25 square root of 2 over 2 as a result. You could write that as 12.5 square root of 2 if you prefer. That's how you use trig ratios with 45, 45, 90 degree trinals. The next video will be about the same for 30, 60, 90 trinals. Thanks for watching. See ya.